والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله So if I were to repeat that all again together سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله Alright, so basically when is this all said? So this is a very comprehensive way of remembering Allah and thinking about Allah, connecting with Allah, uh, reminding yourself who Allah is and what He can do for you and so on and so forth. Now, what we can do is uh, from a hadith, as you can see that's mentioned over here in this PDF, um, that hadith meaning the statement of the messenger of Allah, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, what we know is that obviously there's a lot of things that you need to say to complete your prayer. Okay, now as you're starting, uh, if it becomes a very big task for you to pause and go through all the things that you may have on the PDF or on the app that you're using, and that is causing you uh, not to pray and so on and so forth, what you can do is in all the positions, if you, if you don't know, uh, for example, you know, the Fatiha, the first chapter that we will be covering soon in the rest of the videos, uh, or you don't know the ending and whatnot. So in those positions, in the positions where you don't know the actual thing that is to be said in that position, right? So remember, we have a few positions, right? Standing, bowing, prostration, sitting, and so on and so forth. So in those positions, what you can do is you can say uh, these uh, five lines, okay? Uh, so, for example, you start Allahu Akbar, uh, and then you will say these five lines, and you do the prostrations. In the prostration, you can say this, or in the, uh, I mean, you do the bowing. In the bowing, you can say this, or you have one line statement in the bowing. You can memorize that or learn that and say that. But either way, so this is a good thing to go over, uh, to know what it means and how to say it. And then, inshallah, uh, God willing, you can also use it throughout your day to, to be more conscious and uh, aware of Allah. So the first thing that we say, which is basically uh, subhanAllah, which means glorification, right? Which means that you are saying that Allah is free from any deficiency or imperfection. Allah is free from any deficiency or imperfection. So a deficiency would be like, uh, you know, someone needing to sleep, uh, getting tired, needing food, needing water family so on and so forth imperfection would be that okay if someone has the ability to do something but it's imperfect like you know you and i can see but our sight is imperfect we can't see what's behind the walls we can't see what's like 20 miles across us or what's in the next continent and so on and so forth so that's an imperfection allah does not have any imperfection or any deficiency the next thing you say is walhamdulillah so all these wa by the way uh, these mean this means end so you're adding to your uh, praises of Allah. So when you say, Walhamdulillah, uh, what this means is that all complete praises and thanks belong to Allah and alone, right? And why is that? It's not because of what He has given you. It's not a transactional thing, but you're really appreciating Allah for who He is, okay? Let me give you an example. So if you see someone, you know, uh, developing an amazing car, you'd be like, wow, you know, this is a really great car. Or, you know, if you see uh, scenery, mountains, water, rivers, oceans, uh, or trees, forests, okay? So you'll be just like wowed by that. Or like a car, you'll be wowed by that, right? So re regardless of if that car has been given to you or not, but you're just appreciating uh, the manufacturer, the manufacturer, the developer, the designer, and so on and so forth. So now imagine, you know, anything that you and I like, anything that we are owned by, that is actually, you know, creation of Allah, right? Even if it's an indirect creation, like why a human being? Who is the one who actually inspires those ideas? Who is the one who actually facilitates that? Who is the one who gave us the ability to see and appreciate that? So when we say Alhamdulillah, all praises belong to Allah. And if you really uh, get into it, if you think about it, this would help you appreciate Allah. You know, sometimes we appreciate like, you know, athletes or actors or designers or inventors because we are thinking about their creation, but we forget that you know, Allah is the source of everything. 
And the, the, this way, you know, when I mean, we really say it, we mean it uh, in our personal life for what Allah has given us and also for everything else that Allah has created and facilitated, we really uh, praise and uh, love Allah. Okay, the next thing, which is this one, and this is something that you have said a portion of it uh, when you took, you know, became Muslim and you took the Shahada. This is about the monotheism. So what this is saying is that, look, I'm declaring that no one is worthy of my worship, my full submission, my full love, my trust, my fear, except Allah. So this is something that as you say more and you're aware of it, should remind you that, look, uh, whenever there's a choice, you know, should I pause my work and studies and pray? Should I do this versus that? Remember that Allah is the one who's deserving um, our worship uh, and no one else is deserving of that. Okay, after that, you say, look, uh, Wallahu Akbar, which is kind of similar, which is the same thing uh, as we did at the beginning of the prayer, which is Allahu Akbar. Now you're adding the wa because you're you're adding and to all these phrases right all glorifications you know uh, be for allah all praises are and all praises are for allah and there's no one worthy of worship except allah and allah is the greatest okay and uh, this is something we talked about in the previous episode uh, now that finally uh, this is a very powerful uh, you know remembrance a very powerful mind to uh, statement to condition yourself with and what this means is that look there's no might there's no power, there's no ability to bring about any sort of change, any sort of benefit, any sort of, you know, preventing any sort of harm except by Allah. So you realize the true strength, the true power uh, is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want to be successful, you know, you want to be a researcher, you want to be a, you know, amazing businessman, you want to have amazing relationships, whatever that is, you want to study, whatever that is. Remember that, you know, if Allah does not facilitate for you, you will not get it. And this is something that's really powerful for that. Similarly, you know, if you're feeling lazy, you're feeling like, you know, not like acting uh, on the right uh, in the right way or doing the right thing you know you can use this statement to condition yourself and to seek the protection the help the power uh, from Allah okay now let's uh, quickly review uh, the, the the syllables or the spelling of that so this is easy sub ha nal law so again you know I'm using double A's for a stretch you know longer stretch and I'm using uppercase for uh, heavier sound walhamdulillah Wala ilaha illallah. Okay, so I'm breaking it down, but if you read it like together, it becomes Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Wala ilaha illallah. Wallahu akbar. Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah. So let me slow it down. Wala hawla. So when I have a double uh, letter, like here, so you can see that it's it's coming as double. Same thing here. Okay, so I hope that was beneficial again. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wala ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah. So you can practice this, you know, line by line, and then inshallah you, you'll get there. So again, don't worry about getting it perfect, but what counts is your focus, your sincerity, your attention, and you're um, actually putting in the effort to learn, okay?